Indian ex-Muslim nearly killed by a brother after denouncing Islam. On May 1st, police from Kerala, India, filed the police report for the attempted murder of 24-year-old ex-Muslim Ashkar Ali, uh, who was attacked by a group of men that included his brother. Ashkar had long been a student of Islam and had completed a 12-year advanced Islamic religious study program. Upon completion of his studies, he decided to leave Islam, a decision that his family did not support. He was an invited speaker at a conference held by Essence Global, an organization promoting, quote, scientific temper, humanism, and the spirit of inquiry and reform in society. According to Ali's statement to the police, a group of men tried to prevent him from speaking at the conference. The group physically assaulted him, destroyed his phone, and attempted to kidnap him. He was rescued by the police when locals raised the alarm about the attack. Ashkar uh, completed his speech at the conference under, under the protection of the local police. I have a recording of the speech, which details his, quote, path to humanism and his criticism of Islam as, quote, the real fascism has already gained mass attention in India, accruing nearly a million views in less than a week. Um, so this was a huge story that came out in South India last week, this past week. And um, particularly, this was blowing up in the Indian ex-Muslim community. Um, the uh, ex-Muslim community in South India is like one of the strongest in the country. Um, it's a very big and organized community in that area. Um, and yeah, I just everyone I know from that community and from those areas was, was just talking about this. This was a huge deal. Is this man safe in India with all, you know, I don't know, like, does he have to just live the rest of his life now looking over his shoulder? So according to the reports, um, he has not like pursued additional protection. Okay. Well, good luck. Okay, I don't know what to say. That's crazy. You you sent me a video. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna. Sh which one should I share? The Facebook one or the YouTube one? I haven't made a decision of him speaking because he speaks very passionately. Yeah, let's do the Facebook one because at least there are like some English captions in it. Um, okay, so here's the thing. I desperately want to watch this guy's speech. Okay, so Essence Global, actually, no, it was a different YouTube channel. But if you Google, like, um, Essence Global Ashkar Ali, like, you will find his hour-long speech. I desperately want to watch the speech, but it's in uh, Malayalam. Um, mm -hmm. And I thought, like, an hour is a long time for someone to translate that and put captions on it. Um, but in this, he, you know, throws in English phrases sometimes when he speaks. Um but forever stormy saying she, he's safe in the state that he is mm -hmm. so okay um all right i'm gonna play the video you wanted to say something before i play it so in in this clip and in this video he's basically talking about how like his his beliefs and why islam is a form of fascism and what he learned in his islamic studies as well as how he like pursued a, like an advanced degree in sociology and how this degree taught him about how islam is fundamentally undemocratic and like against our democratic ideals and values um mm -hmm. and uh yeah, just in general, his speech is about like um, some sexual harassment experiences he had in his Islamic institution and his um, like more rational approach after um, his experience in Islam. And I think he is going to be a major ex-Muslim speaker and figure in India going forward. Like, I can't even understand what he's saying and I'm compelled by the way that he speaks. Like, I, I feel like I am... I can just tell like he and from whatever people who can understand him and uh, understand the language he speaks they're like he's he's very articulate um mm. a very erudite speaker like and um a very powerful speaker so i think this he this video that um of his speech was posted like five days ago it already is at seven over seven hundred thousand views mm -hmm. 
So, but the, but with including this because on YouTube it has seven hundred thousand, but it's also being shared in so many other place, places yeah. and viewed in other formats as well, right? Like for example, yeah, okay, this is the Facebook version. Uh, one minute of it, okay. So hold it. You see now. I just want you to pay. You had audio. Mm -hmm. So given that most people, even even in people in India, are not going to understand this, a lot of people because it's a specific language, right? Um, but but just just i'm just gonna, we're just gonna play it just so that you can see the passion and in his voice not the whole thing. Yeah. like what just do like just do like 30 seconds 45 seconds okay 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 you see now as it is you know, as it is the real bosses i'm very sure about it i'm very clear i mean in the quarter jenny to return i mean sociology yeah made a combo in the money and i don't know he says he was in a you know, I was really shocked. Yende kuda jeni chavan. Aven civil engineering ko badi kumbha yende pani ida na. If pali enge na adi chu bolla na badi kya. Ladi locked. Uta ma ayvan na krami chalam prasno illa. Watte pratti ayalam prasno illa. Thale vetti kala ayalam prasno illa. That's my simple policy. Yende genuine ay chodi ana. Yevada vary varki yeva adi kum, vary madadi yeva adi kum, vary space mila ayen vedika. Okay, some, somebody needs to turn this into a soundtrack. I think it can be done. <laughs> no? That's, that sounds like an pretty auto epic. Tunes, an auto -tunes, I can't talk to it in an auto-tuned song. Yeah, yeah. I think it could be like an ex-Muslim anthem or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I am begging out. someone to please translate this speech. If anyone adds caption to this, like with the permission of Essence Global, like we will caption and put this on Atheist Republic. Um, yeah, because I, I, I like this guy. I like this guy. I think. Can we has... get it? Secular rights is saying we should get him on the show. Do you think we could get him on the show? I bet I could find him. So I am friends on Facebook with. Um, a few months ago, we talked about uh, this ex-Muslim in from the same region named Anish and how the police. Um, took action against him, like preempt him, supposedly from the pressure of Islamist groups. Um, they took action against him for some Facebook posts he had criticizing Islam and he possibly faced like blasphemy charges and stuff. So um, I, I, I have a connection to him and he uh, seems like he has a connection to uh, Ashkar. So it's a possibility. Okay, so here's another thing. We uh, we have to try to encourage as much as possible to the ex-Muslim community in India not to give in to Hindu for support, not to like accept Hindu for support, because that will destroy their movement. What do you think? I um agree. I well, obviously I agree. I don't from. People I know, they report that they're not really inclined to do that already because they face a lot Good. of discrimination because of their, their like the name that they have yes. itself. Like they have a yes. Muslim name, they come from a Muslim background. So even though they don't believe, they face a lot of discrimination because of it. Um, right. So th th of course there are some that do, or there are ex-Muslims who are actual Hindutva, right? Um, but people report to me and again it is anecdotal i don't have studies that um so here's what i yeah, think is happening Mo uh, i think a lot of ex-muslims who left islam will still notice that hindutva doesn't care that you left islam you're you're still to them to them you're still a muslim because you come from the community um but they if you just a second please but if you are outspoken, okay, so we have ex-Muslims, but we also have ex-Muslims who are very outspoken against Islam, okay? Most, the vast majority of ex-Muslims just leave Islam, but they're not activists, right? But I think Hindus, even though a lot of them would be this, this discriminatory against ex-Muslims, they will make an exception, some of them, for an ex-Muslim who is going taking a stance against Islam. We're like, oh, here's a token ex-Muslim that we could celebrate because of how anti-Islamic he is. You know what I mean? As well, like yeah, you've special... gone through that experience. Yes, I've gone through, <laughs> and, I, and I, <laughs> I have, <laughs> and I came through the other end fighting Hindutva. 
But I want people, I want to tell ex-Muslims in India that if they're fighting the fascism of Islam, do not do so by defending the fascism of Hindutva. Yeah. Very so well put. I'm... Very well put. Yeah. But anyways. Very well put. Yeah. You wanted to add something? Oh, here. something. Somebody, ABC saying, that's why a lot of ex-Muslims joins hand with Hindutva because they are the only one who can protect these people. They, Unfortunately, not that can be you. true. Yeah, but they're not protecting you. They're using you. Okay. Mm -hmm. You okay, as an ex-Muslim, you're facing discrimination. Okay. Hindutva is also discriminating a whole bunch of people. Okay. So don't use your experience of discrimination as an excuse to support another group that is discriminating an, uh, another group of people. Your experience of oppression or discrimination should be should encourage you to stand up against all forms of discrimination, not just against the group that you belong to. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, anyway. uh, you know, critics of Islam in India in general, but ex-Muslims in India face the particular issue of the many other ex-Muslims you've experienced, like left-wing appeasement to Islam. And the only people willing to talk with them or the only people willing to pla platform them are right-wing people because the left-wing thinks that you are attacking minorities, you know? So they, they face that same issue. So, well, you know, ex-Muslims activists in general have to make very calculated, like, cost-benefit analyses about who they're working with. Like, Armin, you yourself have, like, worked with or been platformed by, like, right-wing people because they were the ones who would take you. But you were responsible with that and made that an opportunity to criticize them as well. Exactly. Okay. So this is so here's the thing. If you're an ex-Muslim and you're in India, okay, and you're an activist against Islam, in the West, a couple of years ago, um, a lot of us ex-Muslims went through the same almost well, the same kind of situation, right? Um back at the time where criticizing Islam was very, very taboo. Right now, it's more more accepted, but back then it was gross and racist, right? as some people say, um, considered gross and racist. Um, but we 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 and a whole bunch of ex-Muslims spoke against Islam, and we were, you know, demonized, um, almost lost all everything that we have, and you know, uh, but we came back and we survived. But at that time, right-leaning people especially people that had b promoted bigoted ideology against um, minorities including muslims like they weren't anti-islam they were anti-muslim right they were the only people who were willing to highlight our cause right so some ex-muslims gave into that and went that way and it hurt the movement the entirety of the ex-Muslim movement was seen and described as by so many people as a cover for bigotry. And it was, it really was hard to recover from that image that people had from the ex-Muslim movement. So be careful not to go that route because we know we have that experience. However, like Susanna said, that it doesn't mean that you don't have to accept their platforming just take a jab at their ideology while you do so right so for example um i was platformed by right -leaning, leaning like um news you know news platforms and other podcasts and co host of you know youtube channels and stuff like that but and they expect me to come there and tell you how evil islam is right and then be like oh look this is a person from the community islam is evil you know, you, you hear it from yourself. It's not we're saying it, it's them, them saying it, right? So it's, it's, they love to highlight that, right? But every time I go there, I also mention, I take a jab at their holy cows, which is Christianity and conservatism, right? And, tell, and I also say, we're, I mentioned that we're against all religions, including Christianity. And I mentioned a couple of examples of why Christianity is barbaric as well. And I also mentioned on air on their show how much um, Islam shouldn't be used as a way to attack Muslims as a whole and generalize Muslims or 
you know, uh, to demonize Muslims. And also I mentioned on their platform that the best way to attack Islam is to befriend Muslims instead of ostracizing them, instead of demonizing them, instead of, instead of utterizing them. If you want to, if you want to attack Islam, you have to befriend and get close to the people who have those ideas. You're not going to change their mind by attacking them. In fact, you're going to strengthen the ideology and even radicalize it extra by attacking the people. So even if you're not a humanist enough to just want to be good to people because they're people, right? Even if your entire agenda is to weaken Islam, even by that, even by that agenda, the best strategy is to treat them well, include them in society, accept them as part as 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 one of you and treat them well so that they so that your ideas so better ideas enlightenment values can compete with their islamic ideas because by attacking them all you're doing is isolating them and pushing them back into that islamic community as their only source of refuge and also because of their oppression radicalizing them against you Anyways, I think I spoke too much. No, I think these are all words of wisdom. No, Good words you. of wisdom. Well, I appreciate that. Atheist Republic needs your help. We have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Avabi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.